Hi and welcome back to Bike Speeds. This week we're going to service this Savella S series. As you can see, this is a dream bike. But we're going to take this from 95% to 100%. We had a rubbing pedal arm on the frame, which has caused some damage. We're going to update the DI2. We're going to address a rubbing brake. And there's lots of little details on this bike which are just going to transform this bike to where it should be. Now you can hear here, we've got a little bit of rubbing on that front disc. Not the reason you would think with adjustment, but something else which we find when we take this wheel out. We've got this rub mark here on the frame. That's from a power meter battery rubbing the frame there. So we need to address that. And again, there was a simple reason for this, which we'll show you shortly. So we have this issue going on. We're also gonna polish and ceramic coat this bike as well when we're cleaning it up. So it's really gonna present well. The chain here, it's on around about 0.5 of wear, which is what they recommend for DI2 to replace the chain. So with this bike, it's not worth scrimping and scraping on any of the details. We're gonna replace that chain and put a new one on there. And when I removed this front wheel, I noticed here you can see that the dropout mount itself had come loose in the frame. That was stopping the wheel going into the frame square. And that was one of the main reasons for that front brake rubbing on that disc. It was because this was loose. So we'll address that when we put the bike back together. And this rear one was so tight. I had to put a proper leverage in that to get that undone. So I'll make sure that's correct when I put it on. But look at this cassette. I couldn't undo this in my normal manner. I had to get my extender bar on here to give me a bit of leverage to actually undo that. It was over tightened. We always torque those up when we put them back together so that will be the correct torque when it does go back together. Way too tight originally. You can see a little bit of grease and oil build up on there. So we'll clean that through. But we're also gonna take off the derailleurs, clean everything up nicely as we always do. You can see here the rear derailleur, very little dirt on it but it is dry, it needs a little bit of lubrication. We'll clean up those jockey wheels, make that really, really nice. Because again, with a bike of this nature, we don't want to cut corners in any way on this one. So we're going to get this pedal arm off. We're going to get the chain set off. We're going to weigh up things like the bottom bracket to make sure the wear in there is okay. And this was the problem I found, which is causing that rub. There's a seal over the bearing and it was simply on upside down. It has a little lipped recess on it that actually allows that to sit slightly out from the frame when it goes back in this way and it was just enough to give us the clearance on that frame to stop that constant rubbing of that pedal arm as it was going around so it was a simple simple fix on this one which we will address when we put it all back together we'll make sure they're on the correct way so we're also going to remove the brake pads this bike has actually done very very little mileage i i feel from from the wear that's on the bike i don't think it's done an awful lot of mileage but with disc brakes we need to clean those up make sure the pads are always clean before we put them back together just so that we prevent any problems with the brakes with noise as they're being ridden i'm even going to take the bottle cages off here the bolts that were in there had begun to show slight corrosion you can see here we've got black at the top and a black head and in the middle there you see that little silvery section that i'm now pointing to there that is actually early corrosion on that bolt these bolts weren't greased or lubricated. We're going to grease and lubricate them, which should stop that catalyst of water going in there, causing that corrosion. So we'll make sure that when we put those back together, they're all lubricated. I'm just going to pop a cap into the DI2 socket. We don't want that to get wet in any way when we wash these down. They're not going through the ultrasonic cleaner. We're just going to wash these down with warm soapy water. They weren't that dirty, but we want them to be spot on and nice. So we're just going to wash those down and make sure that they're absolutely as they should be before we lubricate and put them back together. We're also gonna do the through axles, the chain set itself, everything washed down, make sure it's nice. Very little to go in the ultrasonic cleaner on this one because the bike was absolutely spotless when it came in. We're just taking it to the next level with what we're doing here. So even the bottle cages, we'll give those a wash down. And the only thing that went in the ultrasonic cleaner this week was the cassette and look at that dirt lift out of that cassette. So that's the beauty of our ultrasonic cleaner is we can get so deep into those components that you can't do with washing alone. We're going to deal with this cassette, make sure that it's really, really nice and clean. We're using our detailing brush there, which we've used for all the cleaning process. We do those on our website in a pack of five, five different brushes. 
which you can buy, like I say, on our website, and we'll pop the link in the description below. We're using brake cleaner here on the jockey wheels because it evaporates out, it doesn't get them too wet. Again, that's available on our website. And then I'm gonna pop this derailleur back together. I'm using a little bit of Loctite 222 on those threads to stop those coming undone. And now we get that back together, tighten those up, and then I'm gonna lubricate that. So the spring, I'd use our premium grease just to stop that going rusty. Our nice general purpose oil on the pivot points of the derailleur to make sure that all the pivots are working nicely. Although this is an electronic shifter, it still needs to be treated as a mechanical because it has mechanical movement in it. So we wanna make sure that that's lubricated nicely and will stand the test of time. So we're using a general purpose oil on the axle there and a little bit of copper grease on the threads to stop that corroding in the frame. And you can see here, look at these bolts, how loose they are on the chain set itself. That is the beauty of a service like this. We go right through it and talk everything. So that's the initial bolts that we found loose on that chain set. And there's a few others as we do this bike. We're gonna literally give this bike a soapy mixed wash down with a microfiber towel. There's no point in getting this super wet. We just want to wipe off the dust really. And then we're gonna address a couple of marks on this frame. I think the chain must've been dropped at some point and has skimmed inside that frame there. A great shame on a paint job like this. We're just going to try and take our eye off it and stop any moisture getting in there by popping on a vinyl sticker. The same on this area behind the pedal arm that had rubbed with the power meter. These stickers are available on our website. We do sheets of these in various different colors so that you can protect your frame a little bit along the way. And now we're going to use the Auto Glim Super Resin Polish on the frame. This is absolutely perfect for a frame like this. It's a very, very creamy resin polish. It polishes beautifully. It's nice and soft on the paintwork. You're not gonna damage or scratch the frame. We're using microfiber towel there, which again is a very soft rag to use on a frame. We sell the microfiber towels and the polish on our website. It's a great way of cleaning a frame of this nature. It really, really shone out this, this bike. It's a lovely two-tone reflective paint it's blue in one light purple in another light it's a cracking frame this one and we're also going to use our ceramic spray onto this bike just to really give that protection that it deserves against the elements again we sell this on our website but this will just protect that frame from attracting dirt and moisture it will make it much easier to clean next time the bike is cleaned down and it's a lovely lovely extra to do to your frame when you're cleaning it up now, with all disc brakes, we all hear the squealing of a disc brake. If you maintain them as they're going, you can stop a lot of that happening. So with this one, I'm just going to sand down the little score marks that are on that disc to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we're going to wash down this wheel to make sure that everything's OK. I can feel all the spokes as I'm washing it down. I can look at the tire, look at the hub, feel everything as I'm doing it just to make sure there's no problems. And obviously on a bike that's done very little mileage, it's not likely to be. So I'm putting a little bit of general purpose grease onto the cassette there. Put that back on. We'll torque that up to the correct torque setting, not over tightened as it was before. Someone must have used mega arms <laughs> to do that up before. And also just check the torque setting on the disc itself. We often talk about this on our other videos, the rotation of a tire. You can see it lovely here on this tire wall here, not being black. You can see that where it says rotation, that's the direction that the tire should be going in. In this instance, the rear tire was on the bike the wrong way around. So we are gonna turn that around. I mean, there's very little tread on these, but it will help move moisture away from the center of the wheel on a damp road. And also just give a little bit of the grip in the correct way when you're turning into a bend. So it's important to have your tire on the correct way around. So we've just swapped that round, reinflated that, and now I'm quite happy with that wheel. We also do the same with the front wheel. We clean it all up and make sure everything's perfect before it goes back on the bike. Now the pads themselves, I'm gonna use a little brass bristle brush, nice soft brush on there, just to clean off the debris around the braking surface material itself. So just clean up both sides of those pads and I'll give that surface just a little clean up on our wheel there to make sure that they're nice and clean. So you can see the bottom ones are cleaned and skimmed. The top ones are as they came off the bike. And you can see that subtle difference, which again is what this entire service is about, making those subtle differences. Now with this bottom bracket, 
cover here on the bearing. I'd use a little bit of silicone grease on that just so as it will stop it rubbing and squealing if it was to move in any way. And then we'll pop that chain set back on. I am also going to do the same on this side. But with this side, I also put a very small spacer on there because when I flex the arm, although we now had clearance with that cover on the correct way, when I flexed the arm, I could still get it to touch the chain stay itself. So I just wanted to make sure there was a gap there. And we've now got around about a millimeter in there instead of the half a millimeter that we had without that spacer. That should stop any rub in there in the future. So that's a problem solved, which on a frame like this it was such a shame to see that wear develop on the frame. So we've now solved that problem. Next up, we're going to start rebuilding the bike. So everything's now clean. Everything's now lubricated. Everything's as it should be and on go the components. So front derailleur, rear derailleur, they're going back on the bike, re-plugged in to make sure they're okay. In go the pads themselves. I also lubricate this pivot point here. A little bit of general purpose on the pivot itself. A little bit of copper grease on the thread. They're very prone to corrosion and also bonding into that caliper itself. So we don't want that to happen, which is why I do lubricate those. It's a very subtle amount on there. We're not caking it in oils and greases. It's just enough to stop the corrosion between the different surfaces and different materials. So that's what we're doing there. Now I'm just putting a little bit of copper grease into the threads in the frame, which will stop that corrosion happening on those bolts that you saw in the earlier shot. So we're just putting back on all those accessory bolts and the accessories themselves, and that should solve any of that corrosion issue or those bonding. Next up, I'm going to address this axle mount on the frame itself. So we put in the axle and then we tighten that up. That'll keep everything square before we put the front wheel in. And in goes the front wheel and when we actually tested the brakes there they were pretty much spot on. The rubbing sound that you heard had gone so we're quite pleased with that. On goes a brand new chain. As I said before the chain had a little bit of wear in it and a bike of this nature we don't want any of that so pop on a new chain and then the next thing we're going to address is the DI2. I always charge DI2 before it goes out and I'm doing a firmware update here as well. You can see four of the components there had a firmware update available. So we updated those as well. So now I've got all the DI2 cleaned up, lubricated, firmware up to the latest versions, DI2 fully charged before it goes back to the customer. And I know that that DI2 is now absolutely spot on. I check it through. There's very little adjustments needed. If it's set up correctly in the first place, there should be no adjustments needed to DI2. And in this instance, it was no different. Nothing needed doing to this. We were quite happy with the way that was shifting. We also just tested the brakes, made sure the discs are in the center of the calipers. And we're quite happy now to work through the bike and we're gonna go through it with a torque wrench and make sure that everything is torqued to spec. So we start off with the hoods, then we'll do the, the actual stem and the stem bolts. Everything there is absolutely spot on. We also check things like accessories as we're going along the bike. And then there's also a little bolt inside this stem, which you can see here was completely loose. I'm amazed he didn't have movement in that entire headset area and front forks, but that's now absolutely spot on. Calipers, the front caliper was quite loose. I also torqued the through axles to their specification. I don't just do that with a hand lever. I do that with a torque wrench to make sure that's spot on. Pedals, chain set, the seat post, the saddle clamp itself. Everything on this was not too bad, but there were one or two bolts that were loose. So we checked right the way through the bike front to back. I'm now quite happy with the way everything's going on this bike. We've sorted out all those little details. And as you can see, visually, very little difference to this bike on the before and afters. It's all about the details on this one. Those little problems that were occurring, those little things that weren't quite right. This bike is now absolutely spot on. So I was very, very pleased with this. Thoroughly enjoyed doing this bike. Please do like this video. We put an awful lot of time into this one. And it always helps the channel if you like a video. So do click the like button and we'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.